Sylvia, what does it mean to be a mathematical pluralist? Being a mathematical pluralist means believing that there is not exactly one mathematical universe out there, but a plurality of mathematical universes, which taken together comprise a mathematical multiverse. But what does it mean uh, to have different mathematical universes? Uh, um, I mean, we have uh, different um, levels of, of equations that, that go higher and higher. We have transfinite math. Uh, all of those are part of the mathematical universes that we, we know. Topology, algebraic geometry, and all of its characteristics, right? Those are not different universes. Well, you mentioned the, the crucial term, transfinite. <laughs> so, um, first of all, to get this out of the way, it's perfectly true. All of standard mathematics, the mathematics we use in the natural sciences and in everyday life, arithmetic for sure, is the same in each of those universes. So, um, the, the motivation to believe in a multiverse comes in only at the level of the transfinite. Oh, okay. So, um, one of the most interesting open problems in the foundations of mathematics is the continuum problem. The question whether um, the infinity of the natural numbers is followed by the infinity of the real numbers, or putting it differently, whether the real numbers are the second largest infinity after the natural numbers. And there's nothing in between. And then there is nothing in between. So that's what the continuum hypothesis says, and to just process yeah. that yeah, quick, quickly hypothesis. define the real numbers uh, uh, and the, the natural numbers and the real numbers. Well, the natural numbers are one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, right, those right. we use all the time. And right. then the real numbers are the, uh, well, they, fractions. they the, the fractions. I mean, they also yeah. include the natural numbers, yeah. but also right. have fractions. And they also have those numbers that have many, many digits uh, 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 after uh, the comma and potentially infinitely in, many infinite digits. digits right. So um, Georg Cantor. So both, both are, are infinite. But that's right. Th but the but real infinities numbers. of different sizes, and right. that's already it's it's so interesting <laughs> to think about that because in school we learn that you know once something is infinite, that's just it. You know, two infinite things are have the same size right. because they're both infinite, and it's not correct. Georg Cantor, a, a German mathematician, showed in the late 19th century that um, you cannot line up the real numbers with the natural numbers. So the real, the infinity of the real numbers is uncountable. That's what it's called. So it's a larger infinity than the natural numbers. And he shows that with a very beautiful and actually quite simple proof, the one diagonal one. proof. Yeah. But once you know that, of course, this raises a question. Is there an, an infinity somewhere in between the natural numbers and the real numbers? Is there something in between or, or is, that, is that it? And that's a question mathematicians have been puzzling about in the foundations of mathematics for a long time. Um, the current situation is that the foundational axioms um, ZFC, which stands for zermelo frankel set theory with the axiom of choice, that's what the C is for, it cannot answer this question. Um, Gödel showed that the continuum hypothesis is consistent with ZFC, Paul Cohen showed that its negation is also consistent with ZFC, <laughs> which means it's a mathematical question that is independent of the ZFC axioms. It cannot be decided in that system. But that's a problem because it's our most foundational system. So there are different ways of approaching this issue. Gödel himself believed that this must mean that our current foundations of mathematics are incomplete. We need perhaps one or several more additional axioms in order to be able to answer that question definitively. Um, and there are some who believe that, you know, that's just what we have. And given that we have a technique by now called forcing in set theory that allows us to construct all kinds of different mathematical set theoretical universes, in some of which the continuum hypothesis holds, in others it doesn't, well, that's, that's all the answer we're ever going to get because our mathematical intuitions are not strong enough to pin down exactly one of those very many set theoretic universes as 
the one, the uniquely correct one. So of all the different mathematical universes that can be uh, conceived, is the only difference the continuum hypothesis, or there are now other kinds of differences that would also appeal? Because you said that the natural numbers, the real numbers, are present in all of them. Yes. Well, the, there are a lot of unanswerable, currently unanswerable set theoretical questions that are open, that you could um, answer in the multiverse just by constructing universes where it hold, where, uh, where one of those questions has a positive answer or a negative one. And then you have the com combinations and per uh, of, of, of all the different unanswerable questions in different universes. So if you had just the, you know, if you had a hundred different um, unanswered questions, that's not just a hundred different universes because there could be all different combinations of those numbers. That's so you, right. So you get some of those universes are nested within nested, one right, another, right. but some are sort of completely isolated mm -hmm, from one mm -hmm, another. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just that, you know, one perspective on open questions in mathematics, given that they don't have any relevance to applied mathematics, <laughs> yeah, right. is to say, well, that's just it. Yeah. Um, Quine called those parts of mathematics, um, mathematical recreation. It's <laughs> like playing around with symbols, as it were. <laughs>